everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to show you a very weird and interesting bug that .NET and C Sharp has, and you can't really do much about it other than wait for the eventual fix to be rolled out. Now, don't worry, it's a pretty niche situation where you would have this bug. However, it is there, it is really weird that this got through all the tests, and if anything, this shows that more unit tests are needed even in .NET itself, but in this video I'm going to show you what the bug is, how it works, and also introduce you to a very cool interface that this bug is part of, that you're probably not aware of, but probably should. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, let me show you what I have here. I have a simple .NET 8 project, and just to quickly introduce you to the issue, first I want to introduce you to an interface. So let's say I have two things here. I'm going to have a new array over here that has three parameters. So three numbers, one, two, and three. That's it. And I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to say one, and then I'm going to say two. Now let's say that I want to compare the two. If I said something like console.writeline1 equals two, what do you expect in the console? Now, many of you probably know already that arrays are reference types in C Sharp, and that means that the references are what is compared when you do equals or also things like dot equals, which means that what I'm going to get in the console is actually false. These parameters are not the same. These values are not the same. Even if the parameters they have in them are the same. So we have value types in here, integers 1, 2, 3, and I'm trying to compare them, but if I compare them like this, I'm not actually going to compare the values, I'm just comparing the references. Now, what if I wanted to compare the values of those arrays? Well, this is where a very interesting interface comes into the picture. That interface is the I structural equitable. And the interesting thing about this interface is that it can be implicitly converted from an array to that interface. Now, if I leave this as it is, the code will compile and will run, but interestingly enough, I'm going to get still a false in the console. However, if I go and I say, hey, use the default equality comparer, and I can provide the object over here. If I do that, then what's going to happen because I used this interface is that a special check will kick in and actually the values of these parameters, the structure equality of those parameters will be compared, and that's why I get true. So I don't have to do any trickery to compare the values one after the other. All I have to do is say I structural equitable, and that will happen behind the scenes for me. Now, this is where this all becomes a bit weird. Let's say I have more parameters. Let's say I have four and I have five. If I still run this on the array and I say run, as you might expect, I'm going to get true. And if I change any of those values, let's say six here and five here, and I say run, as you might also expect, I'm going to get false because they no longer have the same structure. They don't equal the same thing with that equality check. Now let's take a look at something else. Assume that instead of having these arrays, what I actually have is a value tuple or a tuple. So I'm going to delete that and say, here you go, you have these tuples over here and these tuples over here. Now, this is no longer an array, this is a tuple, and if you want to see the actual underlying type by default, then the type is like this, int, 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 int. You can even name them if you want, so you can have int a, int b, and so on and so forth. That's not the important thing. The important thing is that even value tuples like this can have the implicit conversion to an I structural equitable. So if you have something like this and the values match, then as you might expect, when I say run this, you're going to get a true here. And if let's say I change the third parameter over here to one, but here it is still three and I say run, as you might expect, I'm going to get false because they're no longer the same. However, if I change the fourth item here and I say eight, clearly they're not the same thing. If I say run, then look at the console. True. Weird, huh? So this is because behind the scenes, and we can actually take a look in the C sharp code behind the scenes. If I say value tuple over here and I go into it to see the decompile code and I search for the equals check all the way down here, we have structural equitable, yeah, that checks one, two, and three, and I can go further down and that checks one, two, three, and four, and I go further down and whoops, <laughs> they don't have the fourth one. And this is the same for everything after five. So if you have more than five parameters or five and more, you're going to get one, two, three. The fourth item will be completely ignored in the check and then you go into the fifth one. And that's the same for the one with six. So one, two, three, five, six. And then you have the same 
or the 7. I don't think it goes any further. Yeah, it doesn't go any further. Well, it has the T rest and that also misses it, but I don't think it goes any further after that. So any checks after 4 will actually ignore the fourth item in the checks. This is something you can so easily catch if you had unit tests around this, but they didn't. Now, thankfully, you don't have to worry about this too much because an issue was raised in the runtime rape of .NET uh, five days ago now, and it has since been fixed. So if we go into the fix, it's just add more checks, really. So we can go to the file change, and as you can see, we have the fixes, and also we have unit tests, which were not there. How the hell did we not have? I cannot wrap my head around this, mainly because Microsoft is usually very good at having an insane amount of tests for these types of things. But anyway, it wasn't there. Now it is. And if you're using this interface, which I highly doubt, but if you do use it, and as we saw in this video, it has a pretty sweet use case, to be honest, especially with records as well, because you should remember, if you have, let's say, one and one array of let's say a record so i have over here a record of user with string full name as the name and maybe i also have the age because why not then if i have this and let's go ahead and comment these ones out and say one equals new array of people you want to store these people as users where you have nick chaps us over here and maybe you have more so you can have like two here and these two arrays have the same parameters. Well, if I convert them into I structural equitable, then if I say run this because their records and the equality checks will be based on their values, then what's going to happen is even though this is a reference type, these two things will be the same thing on this check, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty nice interface, and I highly recommend you give it a look to see if you have a reason to use it. But now I want to know from you, did you know about this interface, and have you ever encountered any other bugs like this that the runtime itself has? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.